So we understand that an Islamic version of economics, there is nothing like uh, 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 poverty and evasion. This is a very bad word. Every time I hear it, it annoys me. But what is it? How can you do that? And where did that start? You have to change mindsets of the people. That is how things can get better. Why? Riches. Who knows where riches is? Who? In Allah, who are Razaku, Zulku, what he met. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can provide you with riches if you take the way towards it. That's why when you go to Portugal International Airport, you see Americans coming to Ghana, Indians coming to Ghana, Chinese coming to Ghana to look for what? Because of your beauty. To look for money. Now the same Ghanaians are going to China and America to also look for money. So where is money? Where can you find money? So Allah said, In Allah, who are the Zabu? What you take the right decisions, Allah provides you with abundant solutions. May Almighty Allah bless us. Then we come. Allah is approaching several categories. Sometimes when he speaks about people, he goes to kind of deliberate the surprises that he poses the, the non-believers. He, he, he can't really connect. He said, They don't foresee how. They are not surprised about the first creation. They are not surprised of how Allah will recreate again. What kind of mind is the, the, exist, the, the, the existing life is what you should be deliberating, not the one that will come in the future. Because an example has been set for you. How can you be surprised of the, 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 the future? That is so strange. Then Almighty Allah said, what is, what is stressful about even the beginning of creation? What is so, what is so, you know, uh, 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 difficult? What is so, what is, is it worth thinking to create mankind? Does that worth thinking? <laughs> what is so difficult? What I think is that they are found in some kind of confusion in their minds to analyze how Allah operates. That informs the one that they are doing. Then Allah says, We are the ones who created human beings. We created human beings and we can tell the mischief that comes along with this behavior. Can you imagine that? We are the ones who created human beings. I hear most of the time, we are not going to be able to have the wali. Sheikh Hamza. Some say Allah is close to us than our Jehovah Nebi, right? Do you know, some of you are students, right? You know what Jehovah Nebi is? Jehovah Nebi is. Can anybody tell me what is the Jehovah Nebi? Huh? Can you? It is the vein that when you, you talk harshly or hardly or you laugh hardly, it appears in the sides of the leg. But you see, that is only, that is only, how do you call it? An exit, excess exit of transmission that you see by the head. It's not actually the job we And now, if you consider Allah being close to us than the Jehovah what it means is that He is close to the idol worshippers too than the Jehovah Because what He is approaching is not a Muslim. So it's both the believers and non-believers, right? And Allah says that we are not going to have worry. What Allah meant here is that. The jugular vein of a human being is the spiritual transmission of human existence. Human beings were divided into two. 
we are physical and spiritual. Now we have the blood vein that is circulating the blood around our organs, right? The jugular vein is the one that is championing the body. That is what is providing life to the organs to function. That is the, trans the transmission source between Allah and mankind. That is the source Allah speaks to his servants. You see that? So the blood vein is only in charge of the physical body. And the jugular vein is in charge of the spiritual existence. <coughs> so the jugular vein starts from the big uh, toe. Okay? Then goes up to the uh, nipple, right? And then spread up to the shoulders. And then you see it stretch to make provisions. It doesn't make functions, physical functions. It makes spiritual functions by providing transmission to the physical functions to operate. That's why in your throat, you have two sources of exit, right? You have the one that is containing food, and you have the one that you can't tell what it's meant for. As a Muslim, how? Where is life coming from? When your life is exiting, it begins from the big toe, stretched to your chest, and all over to that particular angle. You know why? It's there's, there are simple signs we can understand Allah is because we don't give Quran so much attention. Do you know why the Prophet Muhammad said, when you are eating, don't talk. When you are taking liquid, you should squat. When you are eating, don't interact. You know why? Because one is the source of physical life and one is the source of spiritual life. And the spiritual one does not entertain an alien object. So when you speak, and eating any sign, even saliva, that drops into the jugular vein source. What happens? You choke them. It will resist it because it does not belong there. Look at how Almighty Allah is functioning. Look at how Almighty Allah is operating. <coughs> So what Allah is saying is that who are akrabu ilayhi min habi wali means that your life, your life is 100% based on the function of your jugular vein. And I am so much functional than the jugular vein. That is the meaning of akram. It is not physical. That I'm inside the, the body and I'm much more inside than the jugular vein. That is not, that, that's not what it is. Allah is saying that as much as the jugular vein is so relevant, it's so important to your life because you can't exist without the provision of the jugular vein to your source, I am much more. So like I can't come in between you and your life if you even refuse to what to believe me. 